why why should we let our 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 economy be invested by the Chinese? You see. And the and the Western investors. They're coming we're not, in. They're coming in. And we're living. <laughs> I've I've got what I call uh the airport uh, dichotomy or the ch airport <laughs> challenge yeah. where you've got two queues <laughs> a queue of foreigners wanting to come into Zimbabwe yes. and another queue of Zimbabweans running away and I'm saying look wh 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 what are we missing here <laughs> you know you know I wish I could take all Zimbabweans who have gone into the diaspora yeah. <laughs> and have a good meeting with them for maybe a workshop or whatever yeah. This is the time for them to come and invest warm in agriculture. And I'm seeing them coming. I'm happy because over the last 20 years, diaspora, diasporans have been building houses in Harare. Yes. Now they are realizing that that's not what they want. And I'm realizing a lot of them now are coming and putting their money in the, in the, in the raw areas, in, in, in the, into agriculture. They are drilling bores, putting solar, solar powered pumps and, and buying goats and, and, and yes. buying cattle and, and investing in, in, in free range chickens. They, they, they know more than we do in terms of how the market out there is like. Wow. And, and I'm, I, would, I would really want to challenge those brethren in the diaspora. If you don't make a move now, mm -hmm. The bus will leave you <laughs> in terms of where Zimbabwe is going. Yeah. This is the time for them to really come, not necessarily send money for goodies for, their, for, for, uh, for, for the parents and, uh, and brothers, yeah. but come in and invest in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe at the moment, and anyway, if you go in Africa, mm. it's, it's, it's really it's, it's, it's an unended area, untapped potential. People will be complaining, I don't have land. <laughs> you don't have land, you don't have capital. <laughs> all right. As I said, first of all, yeah. the capital is yourself. Yes. Not money. Yes. You, you must invest yourself. Yes. Land in Zimbabwe, there's communal, there's plenty of land. Anyone who is Zimbabwean, if you go to the rural home, there's yeah. land in there. There's high, it's high time now we, we, we as a nation as Zimbabwe recognize that land in the rural areas and the land in A2 and land in A1, it's all land. What are we missing here? We want to see our diasporans coming in to invest. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So that when, when, when the president and the politicians are saying Zimbabwe is open for business, it must be open for us. By the way, I, I like the political mantra now where they say yeah. that's the best statement we've ever, say, we've ever said since independence, by the way. <laughs> since independence. <laughs> That's the best. Unfortunately, people are thinking it's a political statement. Yes, mm. it's being said on the political platform. Yeah. But that's the best statement we've ever said. We must build this economy. It's starting to make sense now. Too. It's, it's, it's exactly. It's us. No one else. Because if they're saying, mm -hmm. for me, I was taking it as a political statement. Okay. But now you're saying it. It's our responsibility it, it, as it, citizens it, it, of this it's country. It's not. It's, it's, it, let's take it away from political because yes. in our minds, the political is already political is already question marked mm. in our minds. Mm. Mm. But so let's remove that statement from the political play field. Yes. Let's take it as a social statement and an economic statement. Wow. That we are responsible for the building of this country. Mm. And I think when we do that. We, we have rallied ourselves to take responsibility for the development of this, this country. It's ours. What, do you, what are we supposed to do as young people of this nation to build it, to improve it? <laughs> <laughs> um, now, there, there is a, 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 a thought. Mm. Do you learn economics or do you develop into economics? I, I would want to see young people coming down. Yes. I, 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 I attend a lot of agricultural meetings and workshops. Yes. And I'm not happy when I go there. I see only 10% of the attendees being young people. Mm. And the rest are grey-haired like me. <laughs> no. Oh, why, why should we have a, 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 an economy that is agricultural based? There's no question about that. Yes. It's agriculture and mining in Zimbabwe. But primarily it's agriculture. An economy that is agro-based economy, and you, you call a meeting for agriculture training or planning for agriculture strategizing and in there you are seeing less than 10% of attendees being young people. It's supposed to be the reverse. I want to see 90% of people attending being young people. 
Then us who are 50s and uh, 60s, we are just there 10% just to give guidance to these young yes. people. Say, no, 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 Afana, what you are do, what you are trying to do, this, that's not from my experience. Exactly. Why don't you? Put? But they must take charge. Young people must take charge of this economy. Young people must be actively involved in agriculture. We are running away from it. And you are running away from we it. We are trying to adapt that Western culture. Here, we are adapting what they are doing there. A culture is molded around the people and their environment. The Western culture is molded around the, the people and the Western environment. If you bring you. it yes. as it is, it will not fit here. Mm. It will not fit. So when you go to school and you are learning economics with a Western mind, yes. when you have finished learning, yes. you may be lost. Yeah. Very because true. suddenly your qualification is not talking to what is obtaining on the ground. Wow. So we, 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 want, we, want, we want our young people to be actively involved as they learn in the Zimbabwean environment, in the African environment. When, when I sent my son to, to, to school, he wanted to go out of the country. Yes. I said, you cannot go to America, my friend. Mm. Neither can you go to Australia, neither can you go to Europe. Yes. You can't. You, because those are different environments. Exactly. That's why I ended up going to Kenya. Mm. Because Kenya, if you go and you are eating sadza, yeah. they will call it uh, ugari. Yeah. But it's sadza, it's sadza. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I don't have a problem with him learning in that environment because it's, it's a familiar environment. So, and he is, is learning to improve that environment. Wow. So young people must take charge and go out there and own this environment. I am learning. That's how, that's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be. So in, in, in future, when you look at a cabbage like this, I, I think you, you take this crop anywhere in the world. Yes. It's a good crop. Indeed. Yeah. How can we then make sure that this is the way of doing things in Zimbabwe? At one time, Zimbabwe, uh, on average, were producing 0 0.9 tons of maize per hectare. Yeah. Now I think we, have, we are approaching around 2 tons per hectare. I don't know. Huh. But I look forward to a day when... When we are saying we are the best producers of whatever we are producing. And our young people, when they go to school, they must not only go and learn how to farm, they must learn on, learn on how to improve on productivity. Because land is a finite resource. Yes. You cannot stretch land. But what can we stretch? We can stretch productivity. Exactly. We, instead of producing two tons per hectare, we can push to about five tons. Then we can push to 10 tons per hectare. Then, then we, our productivity increases on a finite resources. That's the reason for going to school. We, we, we cannot go to school so that, you know, we come and just continue doing things. The, the same way. thing. Yeah, yeah. We must go to school and say, look, our forefathers were on this. I mean, my father taught me how to produce these things. Yes. And in those days, he was producing sugar loaf, and you know, a drum head, which would take five months to, to <laughs> mature. Now I'm running on this variety called Kiwa. Yeah. I, plant, I planted this thing on the 15th of April. Really? Yeah. And in the next two days, or is, is it tomorrow? Tomorrow, that's the 15th of April. Yes. Tomorrow, this cabbage is making two months. <laughs> and another week from now, we're harvesting. So I, I, I've gone to school, and I've cut... The, wow. the maturity level or the growing yes. uh, number of days yeah. from five months of my father's time to two to 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 to, to half which is two and a half months <sighs> to me that's the essence of education to see improvement continuously one of the problems we are making son is yeah. where my father was producing cabbages yeah. at, at at five months and i finish school i go and become an accountant <laughs> we uh, i'm supposed to move from five months where my father was yes and I'm now on two and a half months. My son must come and say, okay, I may not improve from two and a half months. Yes. But surely, where my father was doing uh, three, was doing 30,000 uh, 30, years per hectare, yeah. I'm now doing 50,000. Why, why can't we save that? We must see continuous improvement. So as Africans, let's also, uh, you know, there's a biblical verse that I always enjoy. Yes. It's Genesis chapter 47, verse 3. Yes. Pharaoh asked these Jews, what is your occupation? Yes. You know the answer they gave? Yeah. Your servants are shepherds, both we and our fathers before us. You, you can hear the leaders exactly. there. Both we and our fathers before us. It has been in the family life. It's in the family life. In other words, in other words, as far as looking after animals, yes. it's, it's, that's, that's what we are made of. We are made of. But us, 
We don't know who, what we are. The father is a teacher. Then you've got a son coming, becoming a doctor. Then the, the, the son of the son becomes a pilot. Look, why, why are you always beginning from generation? You are starting something new from generation to generation. You should carry on. You, you carry on. It would be much, much easier. We went, some, a lot of us went to school uh, through money from those little shops in the rural areas. Yes. That's, that's what, that's what sent us to school. Yes. So if you were go if you were to go back and run the same trading business, then you must say I must I must now open another bigger business because that's what you know. So you are supposed not to be a competitor of okay because your father was a trader. Yes. And you are still a what a trader. Your son is supposed now to be running a, a, a choppies or whatever. Doing it on a large Doing scale. Doing it on a on a much larger scale. So if my father my father was a farmer. Yes. I was born in Pikita Masringo, you know, Nyaunda, yeah. there. That's where I was born. I went and trained as an engineer, but I came back on the land where my father was. I want to see my son taking over from there. By the way, my father died very happy when, when I was on the land. Wow. He was very happy. And, and what more satisfaction am I going to have if my son is going to say, look, Ndara, look, mm. I'm now doing this. I managed to achieve it one time, 300 cattle in my farm. Well, what more happiness am I going to have if my son was going to say I'm running a farm with 3,000? Hey, another zero. <laughs> <laughs> That's 10, how it's 000. supposed to be. It's supposed to be like that. Then his son runs, run, runs 300,000 cattle. Then we're talking of generational wealth. That's what we call it. Generational wealth in terms of both physical wealth yes. and intellectual wealth. The only thing that we are carrying along as young people is generational cases. Thank you. Only. Yeah. We are not improving and even we are laughing at young people who are saying, I am a farmer, I want to be a farmer. People are laughing at those people. Mm. Mm -hmm. People have that negative basic mentality of thinking that farming is for old people. We, we, one of our biggest problem is, can I say this in Shona? Yes. <laughs> you know, you know, kukasira kuguta. Yeah. You, you are satisfied too quickly. Instant gratification. Exactly. You, even when you go to school, what motivates you if I've got a house in Marlborough and I've got a, 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 a land cruiser yes. and I've got a, a job where I'm a manager, I'm fine. No! Why do you, why do you want to be fine with a house that costs 60000 and a vehicle that costs 60000 and a job that pays you 5000 Why Why do you want to be... When, when you can own a whole system. Hmm. So I, I'm saying let, let us really look at the potential that is God-given that we Thank have. Thank you. And, and, and say, how best can we manipulate these resources? And, and, and when we do that, I, 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 I want to believe that even God himself the one who would want to come and, 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 and partner us. But at the moment, we are not even blessable because our focus <laughs> is true. so, so limited. You go on social media. Well, well, the educated Zimbabweans, what, well, well, how do they spend their time on social media? Thank you. Discussing well, politics. Yeah, this one should rule. That one should not rule. For the past five, ten years. Well, okay, if that one should rule and this one should not rule, then what? <laughs> what are you doing? As an Don't we have something better to focus on on social media and spend our time talking about? Ah, that will you. build ourselves. Thank you. Not to worry about the ruling and what, what. If you want to be a ruler, go and join politics. Why, why, why do you want to waste time discussing things that you cannot change? On Twitter, yeah. a lot of young people, their topic is politics. Thank you. And I think if we can reverse that and focus on agriculture being the main topic, we would improve. And, and, and do you know that the Americans and the Western world, they, they have got people who are trained and who are monitoring your thought processes. Exactly. And, and, and they are in your groups and saying, ah, they are still worried about politics, don't worry, they haven't woken up. And those guys, when they come, they know that our focus is on politics, we are not even worried about production as yet. As yet. It's only that they will start panicking the day we start saying, uh-uh, forget about who is ruling. Let's talk about this year. How do we build our country? When we say that, then they will start panicking. At the moment, they won't panic. Because, yes, we are running on the mantra, Zimbabwe is open for business. Mm -hmm. And other countries, they are coming in, investing. Exactly. What are we doing as people who are in the country? We have been blinded when... Politic, politicians say Zimbabwe is open for business. We think that it's for foreigners. 
not us. I've learned that from you. <laughs> can, can we do a quick mathematics? Yes. <laughs> Three million people outside of this country, Zimbabweans, professionals. Yes. Each one sending 5,000 into Zimbabwe yes. every year to invest. How much is that? Have you ever done the mathematics? It's a lot. 15 billion. It's 15 billion. If they were to say, look, all the roads being built in Zimbabwe, Tokwe Mukosi Dem, we want it, and we have come up with a conglomerate which is going to invest in Zimbabwe, and, and, and we are going to borrow yes. money where we, wherever we are. I mean, the children of Israel, when they were coming out of, out of, out of Egypt, they, they were told, go and borrow, take money from, from those people. If the people in the diaspora were to come together and say, look, three million of us, yes. we are going to send to Zimbabwe 5,000 every year to invest in our country. That's $15 billion. 5,000 from each individual per yes, year? Yes, per year. Per year. 15 billion. You won't even feel the pain. They, they, they won't even feel the pain, but they'll be owning this economy from out there. Ah. <laughs> Finish. Finish. So, so does, does the president or the minister of finance have to run up and down the whole world as looking for investors? For what? When you've got 3 million professionals outside there, whom I'm saying, just, just bring $5,000. Unless my mathematics is wrong, but I think I'm correct. I Three love, million by five by five thousand. That's fifteen billion. I love how you are incorporating Bible verses in this conversation. God is ideal in everything I see. It's, it's it, okay. That's maybe for another day. Yeah. But uh, religion is a daily practice. Uh, we, we we don't want to leave God for the for the for the Sabbath or for Sunday worship. Mm. We want to see Him working in us and with us on a daily basis. We 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 have been granted we have been granted this land as Zimbabweans. You want another verse? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Acts seventeen verse twenty six to twenty eight. It tells us it is God who has given people land and places where they stay. Yes. It's it's God given. The only problem we have is God given, but we can't utilize it. Mm. And then God will say, ah, if you can't utilize it, let the Chinese come and utilize <laughs> it for you. And, and, and don't, don't blame the Chinese. And they are doing a lot. Oh, they will. They will come and take the minerals. They will come and take the... I mean, w w w recently we saw a Chinese who was doing chickens in the raw areas. Mm. Massive chicken runs. In the rural areas, and and the people are saying, but there's no land. But no, a Chinese has come from China to come and invest in your rural home. That's, 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 that's a shame to us. We must all be ashamed of that. The Japanese would specialize in, in high tech technology, exactly. And and then the Americans would specialize maybe in in, in superpower, political and economical. But Africa has got uh, more than a third of the world arable land. Wow. Yeah, and, and I think, I honestly believe, I'm an engineer by profession, mm. uh, I honestly believe that Africa's economic turnaround is in agriculture. So when I left engineering to come and uh, practice engineering in agriculture, yeah. I'm actually saying that is the direction for Africa. So, you, you, know, you know, if we as Africans were to say, let's put our effort and our focus and our resources on being the best agricultural continent in the world, then the whole world must come to Africa for food. And we've got that potential. So I think we must focus on agriculture. And I mean, challenging the young people especially. Yes. We are on our way out. The mm. young people must actually make a decision, a decided decision. Say, I'm going to be in agriculture, mm. and that is where they'll make a fortune. That, that's where they'll make an impact in the world economies. So they should take it as a business? It is a business. Mm. By any standard, it is a business. Mm. Uh, so I think that that's where the future is. So when your son came to you with an idea of doing papaya farming, mm -hmm. uh, did the idea of trying to discourage him to do it uh, ever cross your mind? Because at the end of the day, if we are looking at the bigger picture, barely people do papaya farming in Zimbabwe. Yeah, I, I, we, we, well, we did, when I say we, him and myself, mm. we did a quick uh, scan in terms of the thought of papaya farming. Yes. And we, 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 we picked something that was actually very fascinating. More than 80% of papas eaten in Zimbabwe are being imported. <laughs> so, so, I mean, well, we, we, anyone who is going to fill that gap mm. 
of 80% of people has eaten in Zimbabwe, then they are in business. Wow. So you, you are really like kind of going into import substitution. Yeah. But uh, of above that, you are actually improving on your economies of scale because someone is importing popo from South Africa to yes. bring it here. So your competitive is, is, is already there, your competitiveness. Oh. And what more? I mean, I'm, I'm an advocate of buy Zimbabwe. Yeah. What more if someone was really going to say, this is a, this is a popo from South Africa and this one is from Zimbabwe. I would buy the Zimbabwean one. Exactly. So, <laughs> so to me, so it's really someone, he must fill that gap. Mm. But the gap is too big for him to fill alone. And I would want to challenge more young people to say, look, why don't you come together and, and, and produce all the papaya that is eaten in Zimbabwe? If we can say in the next five years, yeah. all papayas eaten in Zimbabwe are being produced locally yeah. and, and maybe we're also exporting. What's wrong with that? I think that's the best way to go, to, that's the best direction to go. Right now, we are standing in a field where there is a lot of tomatoes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you are doing them on a large scale. Yes, we are trying. <laughs> um, let's look at it this way. Mm. Is it capital intensive to do tomatoes on a large scale like this? All right, Th this block we are standing on now, it's on, it has, it's on 18,000 uh, seedlings. Uh, 18,000? Yes, yes. Uh, all in all, I think we've got about 36,000 uh, tomatoes in, in this whole plot, which is just about one and a quarter hectares. Yes, it is capital intensive, but uh, it's more on the knowledge side and the commitment. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, if you look at our crop now, mm -hmm. we had a bit, maybe about 5% has been hit by frost. Yes. But we are, not, we are not complaining. The fruits are there and we keep going. Yeah. So yes. do they pay doing tomatoes? We wish we also would eat food without tomatoes these days. <laughs> So Everybody. even if you go around, yes. people are eating tomatoes. You go into town, people are eating tomatoes. Yes, we tend to overproduce as a country sometimes. Mm. But uh, look, it's, it's, a, it's a basic commodity. It's a fast-moving consumer good. So people eat tomatoes. I've learned a lot today. Thank you. And Thank you. I, 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 I'm grateful for this wonderful opportunity. I'm sure it is God-given okay. <laughs> for other people to learn and gain exposure. Thank you. So thank I'm you. grateful and thank you. We'll be seeing you. Yes. Thank you very much for visiting. <laughs> thank you.